Hi everyone and welcome to the channel and welcome to another episode of Learning CAD Sketcher for Beginners. This series is about teaching the add-on CAD Sketcher which is available in Blender and this opens up some basic CAD sketching workflows as you would find in normal CAD packages such as FreeCAD, SolidWorks, etc. Now today we're going to be looking at linking files. So back in lesson 9 we created this flange and this was from tracing a reference image and creating this flange. We look to the right, we have the sketch here. So this one here is the flange. And what we're going to do is create a new file and import this in and learn how we can use this as basically a base feature. What we also learn is how we would actually mend this base feature and reflect that in the new file. So we're almost using it as like a template. So any amendments to that base feature in our new file, we can update and see that amendment. And we can use that in such applications as assemblies, as master files, as master sketches, etc. So let's start off with the flange. So we created the flange. If you haven't created this, let's have a look at lesson nine and just go through that and create a simple flange. If not, we can create a simple sketch in there, solidify it, etc., and you can go from there. And come down to Blender and right click and click on Blender. This will open up Blender and I'm going to create a new file in here. So I'll hit general and I've got the basic 3D cube in there. I'm gonna click on and right click and delete. Nice fresh scene. And what we're going to do is link in that file. So I'm gonna go up to file. And I'm gonna come down to link. So our Blender file view is opened and we can select the file. So this links in the file. So we're gonna go for the flange, which we've created and hit link. Now what you'll see is a number of folders that come up. Now don't get confused, this is not in the file system. This is actually the file itself, what's in the file. And we'll go down to object. As you can see, there's a number of things in there we can select. Let's select the object and that will hold the item that we want. So double click on that. And what you'll see is that with our old file, let's go back to that, this one here, and just open up our old file. You see that we have inside the collection, we've got the camera, the empty, the light, etc. And this bit here, you see a highlight is called sketch. If that was named something else, say flange, then that will appear in the objects. Let's go back to the other file. So we look down, we've got the camera, the empty, the light, and the sketch. I select the sketch and click link. See all of these are checked, just leave them as is. So we click link and we're gonna need to scroll out a bit, zoom out a bit. We have the file within, so you can see that there. It's been placed within there. And to the right, you see the file has been brought in with this link icon, showing it's been linked in from a separate file. Now we can see where that file is, by coming up to the top and we have a set of icons here if i hover over them this is the display mode if i drop this down and come down to blender file and click on that we get a different display in our tree view here so if i come down all the way down to the bottom you see we've got this path here which is the path to that file so this is a part of the file and what's actually inside that. Now, this is where we actually reload that file as well. If we made any changes outside, we can reload the file just by right click and reload. We'll come to that in a moment. So let's just change this back. Now it's on view layer. So we have this in here. We can't edit this because we need to edit it in the other file. What we can do is use it as a base feature to sketch upon. And this is the same as basically adding plane to a face and then building a sketch upon there. So let's come down on the left hand side. And I'm going to use this add work plane to mesh face. I'm going to select that face and we'll add the work plane to mesh face. Log click, click on that and click once and then right click. So we've got that in there and that's use the center point, click on that and adjust it 
in or close to the center. But let's first come over to the flyout bar and come down to Sketcher and look at the entities. So this plane will be an entity within here. And if I hover over this point, click it and move it, you see what's happening. We have some values that are being moved here. I'm just going to hover this over the center. And what you'll see is a number of these values start to zero out. So that's close to the center now. And I'm just going to click on these and hit zero. Click on this one and hit zero. So we've got zero millimeters in there. We come around and we see how that plane has been placed. So I can see that that plane hasn't been placed correctly upon there. And I can adjust these up and down so I can place that where I want. What I'm going to do is actually delete all of that. Well, I can't delete the top one because we get a warning, so we have to delete the bottom and move our way up. So let's do that again. So let's see if we can get it on this face. So I'm going to click that face and come over to the left hand side, long click, add work plane on mesh. Click that and then click the mesh and then right click. Let's have a look to see where it's been placed this time. Now, if we look along the X, we can see that plane has been placed correctly this time. And the reason why it was moving up and down is because when we move this, our plane was from the side. So we was moving it from this angle here. And because we can move this up and down, etc. What we needed to do is come over to the Z axis. So we're looking straight down on it. Now watch these here. See this one here, the Z is two millimeters. If I move that now, that stays as it is. So I can zero these out and click on this one and zero that out and it's placed in the right position. So what you'll find with my tutorials, if I make a mistake in there, I will correct that mistake. That was a general mistake I made when I was around in this direction and I could affect the X, Y and Z axes just by moving this about. We needed to be directly looking at it from one of the viewpoints, so directly down from the Z, therefore the Z won't be affected. So I can't move this up and down on the Z because well, we're looking along the X, Y plane and we can only affect the X and the Y. When we're around this way, then we can move this up and down and you see that Z is now minus 36. Up here is 43. That's control Z that. Always worth keeping the mistakes in so we know how to rectify. So that's been placed now. What I'm going to do is come over to the right hand side and add a sketch. Let's first select that plane and then hit add sketch. That adds the sketch directly to that plane and we don't have to pick it. So now what we've got, we're in sketch mode. And you can see that because the Lee sketch is highlighted. And I'm going to add a circle. And we're going to add this circle to. Let's click on the Z. I'm going to add it, say, in here. So we're going to come out, add one in here, click on this one, add another one. So what I've done is made this in here. Let's right click to cancel and go back to the normal silver space select. And we'll adjust these so they're in the right place. Something like that. And I'm going to pull this one down and bring this say into here. I'm only doing this roughly so we can get an idea of how this is going to work. So I've got these two pieces of geometry here. I'm going to copy these. So I'm going to highlight, click and drag. We're on the Solve Select tool. And I can use the shortcut Control C and then Control V on the keyboard. You see that we got another copy of that geometry. 
and we can place this somewhere. So I'm going to place it over here. And again, control V and we got another copy and let's zoom out a bit and place this, let's say about here. So we've got those there. They are not exactly in position. This is to show you how we use that as a base feature. I'm going to come over and change the sketch. So at the moment, the convert type is none. Drop this down and select mesh and then leave the sketch. We've created a mesh out of that sketch now. So we see the sketch along the right hand side. Let's press N to hide the flyout bar. And what I can do is take that sketch, come down to the modifier, the spanner icon here, click on that, add modifier, and I'm going to go for a solidify. And we got the thickness, we got the offset. So we've increased the thickness. You can see, well, it's going the wrong way at the moment. And we set the offset to one and that pops out the top like so. So we've got our base feature and the sketch upon the top. We can Boolean these into this if we wanted to. But what I'm going to show you now is that if I come into the other file and we're going to make a modification. So this is the original file. Let's make a modification in here. Let's change the diameter of this hole. So come over to the flyout bar. We've got one sketch in there. Let's edit that. And it's this one here. Let's click on that and come down to the size and set this to 50. Hit enter. So that's moved inwards now. Must remember to leave the sketch. And then we're going to save this. So file, save. This is all saved now. Let's come back to our other file. So this one, see no changes have been made. So nothing has been reflected back to this. Now this is where we reload that sketch within there. Come over to the right hand side to look at the outliner and we want this one here, the display mode. Drop this down to Blender File. And come down and what you'll see in the libraries, you can see that libraries there, open that up. And we've got a file that's sitting there. Right click, reload. And we've reloaded the file within there and the base feature has updated. So that's a quick introduction to the link and how we can use it in Sketcher. I've used it here as a base feature, but this opens up the viability of assemblies in Blender. So we could create a number of sketches, have those in individual files, and then assemble them in a separate project in Blender, keeping all those files separate and leaving your workspace uncluttered. I hope you enjoyed that video and I hope to see you in the new one. If you're enjoying these videos and you would like to support the channel, then you can do so via my Ko-Fi page. That's at ko-fi.com forward slash MJ3D Studio. Any donations will be used to help to span the channel. I'd like to thank you all for watching and I hope to see you again soon.